a priest buys a lawnmower at a yard sale. Back home, he pulls on the starter rope a few times with no results. He storms back to the yard sale and tells the previous owner, I can't get the mower to start. That's because you have to curse to get it started, says the man. Well, I'm a man of the cloth. I don't re even remember how to curse. The man replied, you keep pulling on that rope and it will come back to you. In the foyer of a church, a young boy was looking at a plaque with the names of men and women who had died in various wars. He asked the pastor, who are these people? The pastor said, those are members of our church who died in service. The boy immediately looked frightened and asked quietly, was it the early service or the second one? Before beginning a worship service, a pastor was handed a note to read aloud moments earlier. It says here that I should announce that there will be no BS tomorrow morning. Then he tucked the paper in his pocket and added, I hope they mean Bible study. Two doctors and an HMO manager die and line up together at the pearly gates. One doctor steps forward and tells St. Peter, as a pediatric surgeon, I saved hundreds of children. St. Peter lets him enter. The next doctor says, as a psychiatrist, I help thousands of people better their lives. St. Peter tells him to go ahead. The last man says, I was an HMO manager. I got countless families cost-effective health care. St. Peter replied, you may enter, but you can only stay for three days. After that, you can go to hell. You did chuckle, didn't you? A little snort, perhaps, a, an audible ha, or a chortle, or even break forth with laughter. Because life is certainly amusing at times, funny at times, and often it gets funnier when it costs us something. And we don't have to look too far to find something funny or absurd in life. Whether it's America's Funniest Home Videos with its slips, falls, collisions, or funny pets, or YouTube with an almost limitless selection of clips of cats, dogs, and animals in between. Sometimes, sometimes and some things change. Something changes when life takes this humorous turn. And sometimes hard truths are made a little softer, a little more palatable perhaps, and easier to discuss when the sheer humor of the circumstance is brought to our attention. I know one of my favorite columns in Reader's Digest was Laughter, the Best Medicine. And I think many of you would agree that laughter may indeed be a very good and wonderful medicine for us to have. Now, in our scripture reading today from Isaiah, we may have to turn off the Advent tingle we feel here when we see and hear this passage, because we read this at Advent. And you may be saying, why are we reading this in January? This is a scripture deja vu moment, and you are not wrong. We read this passage just before Christmas, where the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Now, what is interesting about it is the region where the light is shining, where the light has come, 
It's outside of the land of Israel. It's in the land of the Gentiles. That is where God's light is shining. We can sense in Isaiah's exuberance this hope and joy that is coming to those who have waited. One is coming, a wonderful counselor is what we read about later in the passage, the familiar Christmas sections. And this calls for a celebration. It calls for an increase in joy, to raise joy to levels unseen short of a bountiful harvest. Joy is one of those feelings, one of those sensations that you just have to participate in when you find yourself in it. It is more than a happy thought or a feeling. It is an intensity of happiness related perhaps, but deeper and bigger than happiness seems to ever be. Joy lifts us up and out of whatever state we once were in. And what else seems to lift us up and out of whatever state we once were in? Laughter. Yet laughter is often not present in worship or song, at least not for an orderly worship service setting. We often attach seriousness to devotion that important things are rarely open to fun or amusement, that it's set aside, set apart. To study God requires not only sincerity, we think, but also solemnity is expected or demanded. I think all we need to do is just do a glance over some of the Bible stories and subjects that, yes, the Bible deserves the eyes of a scholar, but it also deserves the eyes that are those googly eyes that you get at a joke shop with the funny mustache attached, perhaps. Because God seems to have a sense of humor when he is interacting with us. One of his, his early jokes, if one can say that, is when he chose a 90-year-old woman and a 100-year-old man to become parents. And talking, of course, about Abraham and Sarah. And this is a joke that God seems to do often, several times in Scripture, where what seemingly is not possible through the ordinary methods, shall we call them, is extraordinarily possible when God's in the picture. There's a, an amusing story in the Exodus where a prophet is paid and sent to curse the Israelites from invading the lands of Canaan. And God instead makes the donkey talk. And not only talk, but speak the blessings to the people of Israel. And then there's Jonah, the lunacy of that four-chapter story where Jonah is the most effective prophet. He said seven words, and an entire capital city converted, and not only were they turning to repentance, but they also put their cows in sackcloth so that God might relent. Our list of amusing events and stories could continue. But like last week when we discussed our association with music, so it is also true with laughter, humor, and fun. We feel better after we have joined, participated, and let something of ourselves out in response to it. What we may be guilty of is constraining and stifling humor when it is most needed, when it would break the emotional drag we are feeling and experiencing. Now, of course, we need to be careful 
in our usage of humor. There is good humor, fair humor, and just plain awful humor. If we only find humor at someone else's expense, we risk making them feel less than or worthy only of our heckling and joking. The world is full of insults, stereotypes, and slurs based on demeaning others. Those should be out of bounds and should not be part of what we engage in as funny. When people become objects of ridicule, they quickly can become just as easily subjects of abuse. We often are guilty of thinking too much of ourselves at the expense of others. So it's good for us to have the occasional stumble, the pratfall, the bumble into a good humored joke or situation that reminds us once again that we still walk on ground that sometimes makes us slip and fall and that certainly none of us can achieve being above the waterline. Sometimes we are experiencing the blahs and burdens of life unnecessarily because we forget to smile and laugh a little bit at ourselves or with others. We can think a little easier with laughter involved. We can feel a little better with laughter. We can find a common ground of build bridges and heal divides with humor, and disarm ourselves and others with a good, well-placed joke. After all, have you ever met someone you could still be an enemy of if you've shared a good joke together? Light comes in many forms, including humor and laughter. Look to the light. Cue up the comedy movie, play the silly animal tape, laugh at the comedians who point out our absurdities from everyday experience. Your face will change, your mood will brighten, and you will find life is a little less tiresome, burdensome, unmanageable, or to be afraid of. Church bulletins often have bloopers in them or unintended humor in them. And I share just one. In the Thanksgiving edition of a church bulletin, the sentence was intended to say, thank you, Lord, for the many miracles we are too blind to see. But in probably a Freudian slip, the sentence in the bulletin appeared as follows. Thank you, Lord, for the many miracles we are too blind to see. Thanks be to God. With a chuckle, to accompany it. Amen.